don't need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. All right, my next question comes from Sarah. Sarah's writing from Kearney, Nebraska. Sarah writes, Betsy, I've been listening to your podcast for over a year. I've purchased your book as well as my three class bundle. All these resources have been immensely helpful as I learn more about the interior design industry so I can make my house look more designerly and less like a hot mess. Recently on a podcast episode, you mentioned that you used wall decals in your son's room as a way to add elements that interest your son without spending too much or having anything permanent. I never use wall decals, so I'm wondering if you have recommendations on the best brands that won't peel the paint when I remove the decals in a a few years. Of course, my daughter's going to have new interests, and I'm going to need to change them out. Is removal more dependent on wall prep and removal techniques? Do you have a recommendation on how long to let the paint cure before putting up wall decals? Our daughter's bedroom will have a mermaid slash under the sea theme. All right. Wonderful. So Sarah, thanks for sending this in. I love seeing the decals. I definitely get the mermaid under the sea vibe. Uh, Let's just say that for both my daughter and my son, I have used a variety of decals uh, from Etsy. I've used them from Amazon because my kids have all these different interests. My son wanted something personalized with his name, which came from Etsy. Then he wanted like some life-size figures, which I think came from, I think there's, um, what's it called? Fathead decals? Hold on. That's one of my favorites because they have some really good decals. Yeah, Fathead has some really good ones with a lot of... um, like brands that are hard to get and logos. And I have not only used a ton of decals for my children's room, my daughter went down a frozen path and then we did flowers and then we did butterflies. Um, But then I also use them a ton for my clients. I've done personalized names. I've done wall maps. I've done uh, unicorns. Uh, And the key is for me, you want these decals to stick. I've used a variety that peel off too easily. And of course they're not marring the paint, but then I have to find a way to fasten them. Like for the unicorns I mentioned, the horn was glittery. And so that decal was thicker and it kept peeling off. And it was such a problem because I had to ultimately cut some 3M strips to hold it on, which caused it to puff out from the wall a little bit. And I don't know, just like exhausting. So you want it to cling on there. Now, I would definitely leave a couple of weeks between painting the wall and applying the decals. So I would do at least two weeks. But after the two-week period, I would put those decals on. And the thing you must know, the thing I have personally discovered is that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you want to press these on properly so that they stay, so that the edges don't peel up. No, gosh forbid you have to move that decal. It's not in just the right space. Like doing a map is a nightmare because everything has to line up perfectly. But if you remove it and try and put it back quite a bit, it's going to peel off. You know, these things are just challenges you'll learn. So you want to kind of do a one and done application. And you'll find that no matter the brand, it will peel the paint. And I have found that it's more a function of how long the decal's on the wall. So my son went past Thomas the Train relatively quickly. He went through Star Wars that started to get scary on his wall. But he had a Fortnite obsession that really stuck, pun intended. And those decals were on the wall for a long time. And they did peel off a lot of the paint. Also, my daughter's frozen phase was short-lived. So we had these huge life-size Anna and Elsa characters. They came off like a dream because they were on for six months. But she really loved the flowers and the butterflies. They stayed on for a long time. And again, we had issues. Now, when you're taking them off, you want to go very slowly and gently. I use the same piece that I use to apply it, which is either a credit card or most decals come with this plastic tool that 
mimics a credit card in the kit that you use to apply it. I use that same thing to gingerly peel off and I go around all the edges before kind of peeling towards the middle. Even then, even being fastidious, even going slowly, uh, the paint may chip and peel. Now, I found it quite easy to sand those places and repaint, and you can't tell that anything happened, but it did take that extra couple of steps, and it was annoying. But that's all to say that you can't really determine in advance not only how long this is going to be up, how long they're going to be in the mermaid phase, but also which ones are going to do the damage. In my um, experience, because I haven't been dependent on a certain brand, rather I've gone for the imagery, I haven't noted, oh wait, the fathead ones always do this, or the ones from this particular Etsy shop always do this. Instead, I've used such a variety, uh, hand applying them myself, that it's really hit or miss. And if you don't feel comfortable sanding and painting, just hire a handy person to do that afterwards. But I found it to um, not be a huge ordeal. A big thank you to Aton and the Embassy who wrote our theme song. A shout out to Catherine Heller who owns the podcast shop and is our editor extraordinaire. We also want to thank Ginny Sunnison and her team at the Savvy Podcast Agency for their help with our social, our YouTube channel, and so much more. We also want to thank Uploft, which is our parent company who supports this podcast. And lastly, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to you. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all your support.